This is just a quick overview of labour physiology and the transformation of the uterus during labour. So this is in the preparation phase, so towards the end of pregnancy. The cervix is closed shut and thick and holding the baby in. The uterus is really well stretched and the baby's ready to be born. The baby then sends a hormonal precursor to the placenta and the placenta turns that into estrogen and sends it into the mother's circulation to signal to the woman's body that this baby's ready to be born. And what that estrogen does is it works with prostaglandin and a whole lot of other chemicals to soften this really thick closed cervix so that it's ready to yield to the contractions that are coming in labor. It also assists with the development of oxytocin receptors in the uterine muscle around here, which will be important for labor, and also oxytocin receptors in the brain and breast. So as we move into the separation phase of labor, which is where women are driven to find somewhere where they can be separate and private and safe in order to birth their baby, then we start to have contractions. So the oxytocin that the woman is starting to produce hits the oxytocin receptors that are already in the uterus and the uterus contracts in response. And the reason it's called a contraction is because that's what's actually happening. So these are muscle fibers. So these are zoomed into here and with every contraction, they contract and then they retain some of that contraction as they re relax, which is called retraction. And what you can see, and this will be over hours and hours, is we end up with shorter muscle fibers. So these long muscle fibers end up short. It's worth noting that if this is not the woman's first baby, then the cervix can actually soften and start to open a lot sooner. And it doesn't necessarily have to thin out first. So here we have the next diagram, which is kind of in the liminal phase of labor. So this is kind of mid labor. And what's happened is that contraction and retraction has pulled the fundus up here. It's bunched it up at the top of the uterus and the cervix is being pulled open because it's soft now and it's being able to be pulled up over the baby's head a bit like a jumper. And this amniotic sac with the membranes is bulged into the woman's vagina. She's now leaning. I've got her leaning a bit more forward because women often are forward leaning during physiological labor, which makes sense when you see how the uterus functions and lies in that position. So the cervix is, is starting to open. Now, if you did a vaginal examination now, as you can see, this part of the cervix is moving away quicker. So this is how we end up with anterior lips because this part is pulled up slower. So here's the cervix getting pulled up into the fundus, the baby's moving down and the amniotic sac is bulging into the potential space of the vagina. The vagina isn't like a gaping hole, it's closed as the membranes bulge into it. It holds the cervix open so that it's opening more evenly. It transmits the pressure of the contraction through the waters to protect the baby and it bulges into the vagina as well. And then here we are close to the emergence phase or in the emergence phase. So the cervix has been pulled up round the baby's head. The fundus is really fat and powerful and the contractions start to push downwards. The baby's rotated round so that their back is to the front through the pelvis and they're moving through the pelvis. So their head's starting to mold and the head's moving into that potential space of the vagina, which is being held open. So the amniotic fluid has usually gone by this point because the pressure bulging through the vagina happens as the cervix opens it bursts so that you've got the amniotic fluid trapped here which will come out with the baby but the four waters the bit in front of the baby's head has gone so this is much more powerful contractions it will scrunch the baby up it's it's squeezing the base of the placenta more than when the membranes were intact so we're getting an interruption to the blood supply to the placenta and this is important because this baby is going to experience a small amount of stress cortisol which actually helps the baby to then initiate transition after birth so that's a really short overview of mainly what the cervix and the fundus are doing because it's just all one bag there's a whole lot of other things that are happening but that's really important to understand how the cervix opens because it then makes sense of things like anterior lips and the fact that cervical dilatation doesn't really tell us where the labor is because if the baby's head is not holding the cervix open or the membranes aren't then it might look like the cervix hasn't opened but all of this work has happened up here.